Hello, I'm Jason and this is Diecast Restos. Today I have a shoddily repainted CQ 1030 VW T2 pickup. It was produced from 1975 until 1989. The pickup version came in either red or green with varying wheel print designs. A variety of colours have been layered across my green model here. The base of the casting has a few different reference numbers since it was used for several other Volkswagen buses. Here's how a mint example looks. And here is a Type 2 T2 pickup that it is based on. The casting has very thin rivets holding the rear of the body to the base. I'm relying on these to clip and hold the model together as they are just too narrow to tap. The two round headlights secure the front of the base to the body. The T2 was in production from 1967 until 1979 in Europe and the US. It continued in production until 1986 in Argentina, 1994 in Mexico and 2013 in Brazil. I've already yakked on about the history of the Type 2 in my 34B Matchbox Caravette restoration. However, I shall briefly touch on the history of the Type 2 T2. So 1967 to 1971 models are referred to as the T2A or Early Bay models in reference to their bay window. They also earned the nickname Breadloaf. Facelifted models post 1972 are T2B or Late Bay models. The bay windows replaced the formerly split windscreen of the earlier T1. Early versions had a rounded bumper that wrapped around the front to incorporate a step for the door. Front disc brakes were a welcome introduction on the T2. The Siku diecast was released in 1975 and so is based on the T2B. The T2B's front turn signals were raised from above the bumper to either side of the front air grill. The engine compartment on the T2B was enlarged to accommodate greater engine capacities. Instead of the traditional 1600cc Beetle engine, Volkswagen's Type 4 engines could now be fitted. These changes increased capacity up to 2 litres. The T2 was replaced with the T3 in 1979, though a T2C was unveiled in Mexico in the early 1990s. This increased the roof height by 10cm or 3.9 inches while using the 1.8 litre water-cooled inline 4 engine. The T2C was the last of the air-cooled Volkswagens to be sold. It continued on sale in Brazil until 2005. The Brazilian Combi was finally discontinued in 2013. Now I've had my paint afflicted window piece and wheels bathing in Dettol liquid for a while. This has removed the paint stains, but as ever with these Sikus, it has removed the wheel trim print. I'll redraw this by hand. It's not unknown to me. I've already done this with my BMW 2000 CS restoration and previously on the horribly pitted Mercedes SL Siku that I picked up from Portugal. Meanwhile I polished the green yellow transparency as best I can with some metal polish and wood floor polish. The transparency remained this same tint on both the green and red models. Personally, I would rather it be clear, but I think the green body works reasonably well together with it. Here I'm using my Uniposca metallic silver pen to recreate the wheel trim design. The print CQ used was generally white, but the silver doesn't look too dissimilar to the original. It also applies better than the white paint pen. Next I primer the pickup casting in light grey fine primer. Here you can appreciate the excellent detail that Siku added. And then onto the colour. This is Tamiya Park Green TS35. It's another great match to Siku's original choice of colour. As ever, it has applied smoothly on the first go. No trim was applied to this Siku model. Its highlights are exposed metal bumpers and headlamps, both incorporated into the base. So to reassemble, I first placed the polished window piece back in the cabin, followed by the cleaned cream interior. 
Lastly, the base is reattached, slotting in the front headlamps first, ensuring a tight fit, and then clicking over the rivets. So here then is how I picked up my Siku T2 pickup. It had been painted over by a previous owner, who had covered the window, bumpers, headlights and wheels. It really is a lovely little casting, bursting with detail. It was a real shame to see it in such a sorry state. Some detail on the plastics worked wonders, some caustic soda stripped that paint away, and so here is how this T2 has been transformed. Resplendent in a new coat of green paint, this T2 is looking ripe once again. I've polished up the metal base so the bumpers and headlights gleam like new, instead of being hidden under decades old paint. The wheels I've freehand retrimmed, and I think they look the business. Similar to the original design with a slightly funkier edge. The window piece is cleaned up rather well too, no longer shrouded with overpaint. If you've enjoyed this restoration, please leave a like and a comment, subscribe to the channel, and if you at all can, support on Patreon. The funds will help to obtain rarer and rarer diecasts in need of salvation. YouTube memberships are also available. Don't forget to check out Diecast Restos on Instagram, but all that leaves me to say is thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.